Welcome to the recorded training for the process emissions section of SLICE. To begin, click the login link at the welcome screen and type in your SLICE user account credentials. You'll be taken to the My Facilities screen where you can see a list of all the facilities your account has been linked to. Some SLICE users may only have one facility linked to their account, while other users may have multiple facilities linked to their account. Click the Open button under the Actions heading on the right side of the screen for the facility you would like to view information for. Once you click the Open button, you'll be brought to the My Report screen. This report screen will list all the emissions reports that are available for you to view or submit for once the DNR has created the report. In this case, we are looking at the 2016 emissions report, and you will notice the status is in process. Upon first logging in and viewing your 2016 emissions report, a button with a play icon will be listed. This indicates the report has not yet been started. Click this button to begin working on your emissions report. In this case, the emissions report has already been started, so the status is in process. Once you click the open button on the My Report screen, you'll be taken to the 2016 emissions report screen for the facility. At this screen, you will be able to view the facility inventory and the emissions report. This screen allows the user to view or edit information related to the facility, release points, control devices, emission units, unit processes, and emissions. Click the Process Emissions button to begin entering throughput, operating schedules, and emissions data. After clicking the Process Emissions button, the user will be taken to a screen that lists each process at the facility that has been included in the emissions report. The processes listed will be those that are associated with an emission unit that has a status of operating. For any emission unit that has a status of permanently shut down, the unit processes for that unit will not appear in the emissions report if the status date for that unit is during or before the emissions year. For example, we are looking at the 2016 emissions report. If the status date for a permanently shut down emission unit is during the 2016 year, the processes for the emission unit will not appear on the process emissions screen. If you would like to narrow the list of processes in the emissions report to exclude insignificant activities, please contact the DNR by sending an email to slice at dnr.iowa.gov. The process emission screen allows you to sort by emission unit identifier, process identifier, SCC number, and annual throughput. The default setting for the display of unit processes is in ascending order by emission unit identifier. Click the process identifier header and you will be able to toggle between ascending and descending order by unit process identifier. In the upper right corner of the screen, there's a filter box. If your facility has a large number of unit processes, you can use the filter box to save time when navigating directly to a unit process you would like to enter throughput and emissions for. Simply type in the emission unit identifier, unit process identifier, or emission unit or unit process description, and SLICE will shorten the list of identifiers to those that have matching results to the criteria you enter in the filter box. To return to the original listing of processes in the emissions report, simply delete the criteria in the filter box. To begin entering emissions, click the Edit button for a unit process identifier on the right side of the screen under the Actions heading. You'll be taken to the screen for the unit process. You'll notice there are hyperlinks for both the process identifier as well as the emission unit identifier. By clicking either one of these links, SLICE will quickly take you back to the facility inventory information for either the process identifier or the emission unit identifier. The SCC number that was selected while you were in the unit processes button appears here. The first data element that can be edited is the process is reported checkbox. If this process should not be reported in the emissions report, simply uncheck the checkbox. Take note that once the checkbox is unchecked, all of the data that is listed on the process, operations, and emissions tabs will be grayed out. Upon checking the checkbox, you'll notice the data fields have not been saved. Please be aware that once the user unchecks the checkbox, 
the data will be wiped out. The first required data element is the annual throughput for this process. The second data element that is required is the throughput unit of measure. Click in this box and select the unit of measure for the throughput that you are reporting. In this example, the throughput was entered as 15,000 pounds of welding rod during the emissions year. The value is 15, while the units of measure is 1,000 pounds. The next data element that is required to be reported is the throughput type. Throughput types include E for existing, I for input, and O for output. Examples of each of these throughput types can be viewed by clicking the tip tool next to the throughput type heading. Please contact DNR Emissions Inventory staff if you have questions regarding which throughput type to select for a process. The next data element is throughput material. In order to select a material, you need to start typing in the field. The field will return selections based on the first few letters that you type. Once you have selected the throughput material, you are ready to move on to the Operations tab. All data elements on the Operations tab are required to be completed. Type in the average number of hours per day, days per week, and weeks per year that this process operated during the emissions report year. Once you type in the hours per day, days per week, and weeks per year, and then tab into the actual hours field, you'll notice the hours are auto-populated based on the three variables that were just entered. The actual hours can be overwritten to within 0.5% deviation of the value that was calculated. The hours per day, days per week, and weeks per year can be entered to the nearest hundredth, which allows for greater precision when SLICE auto-calculates the actual hours value. The seasonal operations are based on the meteorological season as opposed to the calendar quarters that were used in SPARS. For example, Slice is asking the user to provide the percent of total operations that occurred in the months of January, February, and December for the reporting year, March through May, June through August, and September through November. The total of all four fields must equal 100% or be within a 0.5% deviation of 100%. The last tab that needs to be completed for each process is the emissions tab. This is where the user will report the pollutants being emitted, the calculation method code, the emission factors, and the estimated emissions. To add a pollutant to the emissions tab, click the add button in the lower left corner of the screen. A window will open up that will allow the user to add the pollutant, calculation method, emission factor, emission factor unit, estimated emissions, and a comment if needed. The comment field is the only field that is not required to be reported. To indicate the pollutant being emitted, simply click in the pollutant code text box and begin typing the pollutant name or CAS number. A list of pollutants will be activated for the user to select based on the letters that were typed into the text box. Select the pollutant code from the list by clicking on the appropriate code. Next, click the calculation method drop-down menu and select the source of the emission factor for the pollutant that was selected. You'll notice that some calculation methods have no EF in parentheses in the description, while others do not. For the calculation method codes that have no EF in parentheses in the description, you'll notice that the emission factor and emission factor unit of measure fields are grayed out, and you are not able to report an emission factor for that calculation method. However, you are still able to report an estimated emissions value. Conversely, if the user selects a calculation method code that does not have no EF in parentheses in the description, you'll notice that the emission factor and emission factor unit fields are then enabled and allow the user to enter a value. If the value entered in the emission factor unit field matches the value entered on the process tab for the throughput unit of measure field, then an auto calculate button will be enabled and the user can click that button to have SLICE auto-populate an emissions estimate for the pollutant. If the emission factor unit value and the throughput unit of measure value are not the same, then the auto-calculate button will be disabled and the user will be forced to key in a value in the estimated emissions field. 
The control efficiency for this process and pollutant is listed on the process emission screen. However, whether or not the control efficiency that is displayed is used to estimate emissions depends on the calculation method code that is selected for the pollutant. If the user selects a calculation method code that contains the words pre-control, SLICE will use the control efficiency that was entered in the control devices window to estimate emissions. If the user selects a calculation method code that contains the word post-control, SLICE will not use the control efficiency to estimate emissions. This feature protects against double counting control and therefore underestimating emissions. When you have finished entering all pollutant specific information on the emissions tab, the user can click anywhere in the pollutant row to collapse the pollutant window. To edit data related to a pollutant, click anywhere on the row for the pollutant and a window will open up for the user to edit information. Upon changing the calculation method code, the emission factor value will be removed and the user is forced to re-enter a value. If the emission factor units of measure and the throughput units of measure cancel for the pollutant, SLICE will again allow for an auto calculation of the estimated emissions value. Either click the auto calculate button to the right of the pollutant or you may click the Calculate All button in the bottom left corner of the screen to populate the estimated emissions field for all pollutants whose emission factor units of measure and the throughput units of measure cancel. In order to remove a pollutant from a process, the user may click the Trash Can Icon button to delete the pollutant. This button is located just to the right of the Calculate button on the right side of the pollutant window. Once the user has finished entering all of the pollutants being emitted from the process, the user may click the Save button in the lower right corner of the screen. Slice will notify the user if the changes were successfully saved or if there are validation errors associated with any of the three tabs for reporting process emissions. If there are no validation errors, the user may click the Back button to navigate back to the list of unit processes at the facility. You'll notice under the Actions heading, there are two buttons for each unit process. I'm logged in as an editor for this facility. Therefore, I have the right to edit any of the process emissions information that I choose. If I only have a viewer role for the facility, I would only see the view button and the edit button would not be displayed. The rights each user has in SLICE are completely dependent upon the role that is indicated on the SLICE electronic reporting registration form. In order to edit process emissions, the user would click the edit button under the actions heading for the unit process they are interested in updating. This concludes the recorded training for the process emissions section of SLICE.